Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Spacecraft. Today we are back here at a new base, our new base build. Um, well, we're on the, the little the little docking area nearby, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just jump right over. As you can see, I've done a bit of work to it. Oh, crap. I forgot I set up a Tesla emitter over here. <laughs> that, that's gonna make things interesting. Well. So yes, I, I finished the elevator. We were working on the elevator yesterday. I've also got a new thing set up over here. We'll check this out in a second. Um, it's a really simple machine, but its purpose is going to be very useful later on, I'm pretty sure. We can also have another set of machines over here, which we will also check out later on again. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, fall down the elevator shaft real quick. So now, I do have a floor selector. So if I go ahead and press this, as you can see, a double... Or we're gonna go up to the top floor! <laughs> well then, that's fun! Uh oh, uh, nope. That's not supposed to happen, I've broken the elevator because I messed up the pushing button. Crap. Hmm, this is... <laughs> this is something. Okay, well... We need to stop this thing from toggling. That's the first thing I need to do. I need to put a piston on the front of it. Um, elevator maintenance crew. Uh, what can we not push? I need to find an item I can't push. Oh, oh yes, piston, and also redstone. Okay, so what we're gonna do to fix our problem is place a piston on the front of this, so it will get stuck. And then we're going to freeze it in position. No! Get into position! Oh, come on! It's still functional! you got to be kidding me. I forgot the button system, how I set it up. So, yeah. Then we ended up breaking this thing. Pretty much broken. Let me get up there. Let me get up there so I can fix it. Okay. Oh... Okay, uh, get, get this out of my way. Good, good, good. Um, now I see that the, the issue is, um, um, okay, I, I see how this issue has, uh, occurred. We need to push that piece back into position. This piece got moved out of position. That's not a slime block! That's not a slime- why? No! Stop it! Stop moving! Stupid piston! Ah! That will work! That's- that's good! <laughs> now the machine is obeying me, again. As you can see, it, it, it went rogue there for a second, but a, um... We, all we have to do to fix it is, uh... Unlock this piston, but at the same time we need to push this one out. Hmm... I think if we go with this... It's gonna do that, but... Pull it. That locks the piston. Which of these is the real one? Okay, that one was a ghost block. Okay, I, I've got my piston back. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so one like that. Come on, get, get the piston. Okay, now... Set it so it will go like that. <laughs> and then all I have to do is place it back into position. Good, 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 yes, good. Um, hopefully I never mess this up again. It's a pain to set it back up. Okay, go back up the elevator shaft. That's fine. I, as long as I don't ever have to fix this again, I'll be happy. There's not realize that there's an issue there. Well... <laughs> Goodbye, elevator. You served me well while you lasted. Okay, go all the way back up so I can show the viewers that this thing does actually work. When I don't break the elevator. <laughs> okay, now, go down. Good. As you can see, the elevator is going down. Now, I'm gonna explain how this works real quick. So this is uh, just a simple double piston extender that activates the thing. Um, over here is another double piston extender that will stop the thing on the second floor. So if we go ahead and activate that now, I think it should be safe. As you can see, pistons are extended for some reason. Yep, 
Okay, now this is a toggle flip-flop, a T-flip-flop, I guess, if you will. And what this does is it will toggle these, and it will make them stay extended even after the button press. So I can use buttons instead, and ha also have multiple setup. That's the, re that's the advantage to using buttons instead of levers. Okay. And this is just a simple chain that activates the same system from a different angle. Now, if we go ahead and set the thing to fly mode again, as you can see, it is going back up. And if I can get, if I can do my five jumps again, it will get stopped here. And boom, it's hit floor two. So now if you want to go to the next floor, you just take this one off. Yep, yep. Okay, it's a little slow sometimes because lag, but hey. And now it's going up to the top floor. Pretty wonderful. Now over here we have our, our other machine that I showed off at the beginning. This machine is a block cycler, but it's cycling batteries. So basically what I'm able to do is these six get cycled around. I'll go ahead and demonstrate it real quick. Uh, this one is a smaller switch, and then that one's a bigger switch, which is actually going to be part of a block conveyor system, so we can convey batteries over to, you know, wherever we need it. Now watch this. Oh. Look at that go! Alright, so today, I actually have a few things I want to do that I've been thinking about doing for a while, and one of those things is actually going to be using some nuclear waste in the Silex so we can actually get bismuth. Yes, I don't even have the Silex yet, so that's going to be fun. Plus, that's how, we, that's how we get to our greatest goal ever of getting the best tool in the game. So we're going to go ahead and uh, head on over to the RBMK. We're going to need to do some modifications. And um, they are, they're very important modifications. So, first things first. I will need... Yes, okay. Uh, I will need a trash can. Um, so we can delete all of the liquids that go out of it. And I'll also need water pumps. So we can fuel the thing. And we'll need a ton of thorium fuel rods. That's what we're gonna need. Alright, so here we are in my redstone testing place. <laughs> uh, don't question why there's so many buildings here. And so much destruction all at the same time. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna, we're gonna need. So we're gonna need RBM K... Yes? Yes? Okay. I can see all kinds of fuel rods in this menu. I got, um... H-E-U, L-E-P, uh, all kinds of crazy things. One of these here, one of these here, one of these here, one of these here. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because it doesn't need to be too good. It just needs to be a bit garbage. I mean, I, I don't really care if it functions or not for a long time. All we need to do is make one of these, which is going to probably melt down because I've set it up so wrong. Now, as you can see, it's going to start overheating. But, it should start the reaction with this rod over here, as you can see. So, we've now figured out how to start the reaction. That's good. <laughs> Poor chicken, it's getting irradiated. You know what, we could do a, uh, a reactor that doesn't, doesn't even use any cooling. What if we do that? I don't need to do any temperature stuff. I don't want to do any more piping, honestly. Piping will just be annoying. The heat is actually pretty good. It's at you know, a decent heat, and it's running. <laughs> so now let's find out if it melts down. Alright, so it looks like it's a stable design. I didn't test for too long. Um, this one, also doing good. It's at 60 degrees Celsius. This one's at 54 degrees. The heat is not what matters, because we're not trying to produce energy after all. We're only trying to deplete the fuel rod. Now, because it's thorium, it will take a very long time to deplete, which is annoying. So, it, maybe there's a way I could deplete it faster. Um, but, I guess this should work. So if we make, like, 50 of these, that will do. Alright, so now we're back in our survival world. Now let's go ahead and check and see what it takes to make a neutron source. Because I think that might be... we might not even be able to do that. So, neutron source... Yes, okay. Now, which of, which of these looks good? Polonium and beryllium. Radium and beryllium, or P 
PU-238 Beryllium. Self-igniting, yes, yes, good, good. Um, temperature is a bit higher than the rest of these. Oh, well, not that one. But hey, that is actually pretty easy to get. That isn't too difficult. Plutonium-238 Nuggets. Oh, I know how to get that, okay. okay. We're gonna start duping items. So one, like that. I'm gonna spare you guys seeing this, because I always do this, so uh, I think you guys have seen this enough times already. Now, something I would like to note as I'm doing this is actually the the fuel rods, they don't stack. They don't stack at all. So, making them item duped is difficult, but hey, there's a workaround for every problem. I managed to make them stack, so yes, I can stack them. Now we should have enough to make some breeding reactors. The next thing we need to do is actually make the fuel for this. So we need, um, what do we say? Uh, one of these, no, uh, the plutonium one. Because plutonium's easy to get, and beryllium nuggets aren't too difficult either. So, next, I need, I need, I need, um, where's the beryllium? Do I have beryllium? Mm hmm? Hmm? Or is it, is it in here? Okay, no, it's not. Is it in here? We have everything but beryllium. Uh, okay. Is there, is there any in one of these? I'm sure there's gotta be some in these. Steel. Steel. Steel, steel. Just more steel. Lead. There's lead, but no beryllium. What about here? Okay, I found some beryllium ingots. They were just sitting out here for some reason. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and make some billets of, uh, good fuel. We need, uh, we need like four of these, I think. Or maybe 40 of these. Yeah, let's go with uh, as many as we can make. That will be fantastic. So 60. <laughs> I'm gonna make probably 15, maybe. 15 of them. Now I do need these, because we will be making things with that. Because we need to make thorium fuel rods. So. Uh, okay. So we have the 238 fuel pellets. But how do we make those into, um, these? Can I... Can I use a Silex on them? Smack. 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 I'm not seeing anything. I'm just seeing fusion reactor fuel and cheese wedges. Yes, this is fantastic. Okay, now let's look around and see if we see what we're looking for. I mean, I don't see anything. I just see a bunch of ingots that don't have... We're looking for one that has an orange F by it. Orange F. Okay, I can't find it. <laughs> Cannot find it at all. Hold on a second. I have polonium. I have polonium. Yes, I don't have to do anything. I just, I just needed the polonium. I have all the polonium I need. I need to go make some more polonium. Just give me a second so I can duplicate all of the polonium ever. All of it. Yes, yes. Oh, my satchel's filled with garbage. It's filled with just... Oh, dear. Okay, um, go in there, go in there, yes, get thrown in, thrown in, don't question the nuke in my inventory. Why is it not going in there fast enough? Go, faster, get in the item hopper. Okay, good. So yes, we have to duplicate a ton of this. Okay, so I have, I have enough polonium to make a polonium neutron source instead of a, a plutonium neutron source. Okay, now go in there, yes, good. We now have some polonium, some more polonium. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my backpack for now. We'll take out the fusion reactor access hatch, because that's for another video. Okay? Okay. So, we now have polonium billets, and we also have, um, if we go over to here, I have a stack of fuel rods for the RBMK. Yes? Good! We are, we are a few steps away from just contaminating the environment with garbage. Hmm, <laughs> yes, good. Now, the good thing about stacking unstackable items is that you can just craft faster. Look at that. So if you need dispensers, just have a stack of bows on you. Now, that is, that is five. We'll be able to make five reactors in total, it looks like. So five of them. Okay, that means we're going to need 20 thorium fuel rods. 20 fuel... Holy crap, that's a lot of fuel rods. Okay. Okay. Okay, so good news. I have, I have the polonium. I have a shulker box filled with these. And I just need 20 more fuel rods. Let's go ahead and see how to make a thorium. It... Won't take me two hours to make a thorium fuel rod.
What? 4M232, okay, yes, yes. Um, we could get a block of 4M fuel. Let's go check and see if we happen to have some just lying around. We might have some lying around, let's see. It just caught on fire, I'm not sure why. Oh, I might, might have fallen into one of the flames. Yeah, I'm contaminated, okay, that makes sense. So... Uh, where, okay, this one, this one, uh, where's, where's the, where's the good old plato, okay, we got some 230, yeah, 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 but where's the 233, 233, is there any in there? We got mox, we got mixed oxide, how can I get 233, that isn't 233, uh, okay, seems like you can get it from billets of 233 from the silex, of course, you can get de depleted thorium fuel. Well, uh... What if we, what if we, do, 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 do. is there any, we, we should have, okay, we might have thorium fuel lying around, maybe, potentially. Okay, it seems like you can get it from depleted thorium fuel rods. How on earth? This makes no sense at all. I'm not gonna lie, makes no sense. What can I, what can I do with thorium powder? Can I make that into something? Can I, like, separate it and then get, uh... 238, that's not what we're looking for, we're looking for 232. We have, yes, 232 is there, but, uh, okay, um, you can shred it to get dust, you can get uranium powder with beryllium dust and thorium, okay. Ah, alright, so we're gonna need to use the breeding reactor, I think. Uh, okay, in the next episode, we'll get to setting up the, R the RBMKs, hopefully, or I'll do it off camera, even though that's not a good practice, but eh? Okay, you'll see. We got some copper powder, copper powder. Where's the thorium powder? Thorium powder. Okay, never mind. All we need to do is just throw the thorium into here. So we can get some thorium ingots going. Now, I should also have some... Okay, I don't have any over there uh, yet. Now that I have thorium ingots, we're gonna go ahead and make a fuel rod that's gonna go in the breeding reactor to do good things. Good things, all good things. We're gonna make some nuclear waste, and then... We will have to use machines to take the depleted thorium and turn it, yes, as you can see here, in the centrifuge. That is how we get the stuff we need to do with stuff, okay? Okay, I'm glad we've come to this agreement. And we're back over here at the fortress place. So now we need to use the breeding reactors to make these into wonderful things. So I'm gonna go throw one of those on the ground. And uh, the good thing is that I've packaged it with all of the wonderful things we could ever want. So yes, we just give it a second to do its thing, and then I can start making the actual, uh, yes. Okay, so there's an SA326 rod, the Shrubidium Nuggets. Okay, that is gonna be pretty easy for us to make, because I already have a ton of Shrubidium. So we'll go ahead and just throw these into here, throw that into there. I'm just gonna get set up real quick, and then I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys what happens. Okay, I've made eight Shrubidium fuel rods for these. So if we throw those in there, it's gonna start operating. It's gonna start doing cool things, as you can see. Uh, now I just gotta throw them into all of these breeding reactors, it looks like, to make thorium fuel rods. Okay, all the fuel rods it takes to make a, a, a thorium fuel rod for an RBMK. I thought I had uh, eight of these, but I have six of them, apparently. Well, that's interesting. Now it's just gonna take a minute, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this part out. Okay, it's almost done. It's taking so long to do this, but it's probably because it only has three heat. I should have chosen a different fuel rod than Shrubidium, but, um, this works good enough. <laughs> it's getting the job done, just very slowly. Oh, come on, come on, come on. We're at, like, the last, last tick of it, and then it will finish, finally. Hopefully some of the other ones will finish as soon as this one does. That would be wonderful, but I doubted it is going to happen like that. Also, this one, I just now noticed, but this one is the caution symbols off center. It's like d different. What? I got a U233 rod. <gasps> That's what we were looking for. That's what we were looking for. We got some U233 rods now. That is what we were looking for. Let's go. Yes, so U233 is now available to us. We don't even have to centrifuge. Oh, we're getting billets of it. Billets, I tell ya. That's good, because now I can just duplicate it. Mwahaha. So yes, in the next episode, I will have all the stuff we need, and we can just destroy a forest or something, I don't know, using our RBMKs. So, if you guys have enjoyed today's episode, 
please consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel. If you guys got any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. I'll see you guys next time, and goodbye.